Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the T's study manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The last three days, today is our day number 122, last three days, day 119, 120 and 121, we discussed the concept, the notion of rounding and estimation. As I said before in, the, in, the, in those three videos, a very important concept, a very vital skill if you're going to take the exam and if you have any hope of getting a decent score, you must know how to round, you must know how to estimate uh, in a decent, proper, reasonable manner. And that's what we discussed in the last three videos. I also pointed out at that point that, and as I do in every video, that we have solved every single math problem that appeared in the previous edition, the fifth edition that I'm holding in my hand, and you will find the solutions to all of those problems from day number 1 through 80. And particularly, the concept of rounding and estimation is what you will find from day number 19 through 25. There are seven videos there, day 19, 20, 21 through 25. Watch those videos and those three. Today what we're going to do is the continuation of the same idea but a little bit different. Here the question is how do we go about rounding fractions? Let's learn this, shall we? How, how does one round fraction? Well it's very simple, nothing new, you already know it, we're just going to make it very formal and that's it. If you want, if you want to round a fraction, the rule is very simple. If, if the top is greater than or equal to half the bottom, half the bottom, we round up. That's it. Now what we are describing here in a fraction as a top, the proper terminology for the top is, is numerator. No, no. How does one spell numerator? N-U-M-E-R-A-T-E-R. Numerator is what your math teacher will tell you and the bottom is what is defined as what is, what is called a denominator. Denominator, denominator. So again, one more time, as long as the numerator, the top, is e greater than or equal to, even if it's equal to half the bottom, we round it up. For example, for example, three-fifth, three-fifth. But we know, we know half of five, half of five, we know. Half of five we know is two and a half. And since since the top is three, since top is top is greater than or equal to, it can actually be either greater than or equal to. Here it's greater than, since top is greater than the bottom, since top is greater than half the bottom, this quantity actually actually is more than half. It's more than half because two and a half over five would have been exactly half. Because two and a half is half of five. This, since this is more than half, if we are asked to round this quantity to the nearest unit digit, so here is what we are told, we are told to round, round to the nearest unit digit. Sometimes they will call it unit digit, sometimes they will call it ones digit. So if we are asked to round three, three fifths to the nearest unit digit, then we will take the three fifth and we will round, will round up, will round it up to one. Three fifth is rounded up to one because it's more than half. Let's do one more. Let's do the next one. How about three seven? How about, or rather five seven here? How about five seven? Well, again, five seven. We know, we know half of seven. Half of seven is three and a half. We know that, which means which means that three and a half over seven would have been exactly half. Since top is greater than or equal to three and a half, here it is five, that tells us that five seven, five seven is actually more than half. And since it's more than half, more than or equal to half, we have to round it up again. Five, five seven, when we are asked to round it to the nearest unit digit, we, are, we take the five seven, we round it up to one. What happens instead of 5, 7 had it been 
three seven. As we know, half of seven is three and a half. Now three seven is less than half. Three seven here is less than half because three and a half is the half of seven. This is less than half. So in this case, we have to round down. Round down to to what? Round we have to round it down, but to what? Well, here is here is our zero. Here is our one, if you like. But here, when we're talking in terms of seventh, this is this one is actually not a one. It's actually seven seventh. Seven seventh is equal to one, and this is zero seventh. This is measured in terms of seventh. We have three seven. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I have to finish it here. Huh? One seven, two seven, three seven, four seven, five seven, six seven, and seven seven. The three seven is here. Halfway is here. Three and a half is the halfway. This is the three and a half. Three and a half seven. This is two seven. This is one seven. This is four seven, five seven, six seven, and so forth. Oh, we have, we are we have three we have three seven. Three seven is to the left of the midpoint. The midpoint is three and a half. Three seven is here. It is less than half. We have to round it down to the nearest unit digit. What is the nearest unit digit to three seven? Well, it is not one. It is not one. It is zero. We have to round it down to zero. Three seven. When we are asked to round it to the nearest unit digit, it is rounded down to zero. Let's continue. How about fifteen? How about fifteen thirty-two or fifteen thirty-second? Fifteen thirty-second. Fifteen thirty-second. Well, we know sixteen over thirty-two is exactly half because sixteen is half of thirty-two. Fifteen thirty-second is therefore less than half. Since it's less than half. If we are asked to round it to the nearest unit digit, again we can round it down. 50, 15, 37 is round it down, round down to what? To zero again. Again we would have gone from zero, zero thirty second to thirty thirty seven thirty two over thirty two, and fifteen would be to the left of midpoint. The midpoint here is sixteen. Just to one point. Well, let's do one more. How about thirteen? How about seventeen? Thirty-fifth. Well, how about seventeen thirty-fifth? What is half of thirty-five? Half of thirty-five is how much? What is half of thirty-five? Well, don't look at me. How the hell do I know? I know half of thirty-four. There, I can figure it out in my head. Thirty-four. Thirty-four. I can figure out how. Because I know half of 30, we know half of 30 is 15, and we also know that half of 4 is 2. If half of 30 is 15 and half of 4 is 2, then half of 34 is tens reason must be 17. And therefore half of 35 should be 17 and a half because 35 is just one more than 34. And therefore that extra one is divided into two parts and we end up with 17 and a half. Half of 35 is 17 and a half. Well, this is not 30, 17 and a half, this is 17. That tells us that this is less than half. So, again, we have to round it to the nearest unit digit. If you have to round it to the nearest unit digit, we have to round it down. Round down to what? Again, to zero. To a big fat zero. Not a regular one, a big fat one. How about, how about 17 over 33? Now, that's an interesting one. That's, that's an interesting one because we know half of 33. Well, how much is half of 33? How much is half of 33? Again, don't look at me. How the hell do I know? I do know half of 32. There I do know. Half of 32 is 16 because half of 30 is 15 and half of 2 is 1. So half of 32 is 16. And therefore half of 33 should be 16 and a half. Half of 33 is 16 and a half. And since the top is more than 16 and a half, this is more than half. It doesn't have to be more than half, it's either more than or equal to half, in which case we would round it up. If it's more than or equal to half, we round it up. As long as the top, as long as the top is greater than or equal to, even if it's equal to, we still round it up. Had it been 16 and a half, we still would have rounded it up. 
So 17, 17 divided by 33, since it's more than half, we're going to round it up. Round up. To what? To 1. How about, how about 16 and a half over 33? Well, 16 and a half over 33 is exactly half. But the rule is that as long as it is greater than or equal to, doesn't have to be just greater than, even if it's equal to, which is the same rule that we use when we are expressing everything in decimal. If it's 0.5 or more, we round it up. If it's less than 0.5, we round down. The same exact idea, exact same idea. There is no difference, except the difference here is that instead of expressing our quantities in decimals, we're expressing our quantities in fractions. But the mathematical concept behind it is exactly the same. If it's 0.5 or more, we round it up. 7.5, if you're being asked to round it to the nearest unit digit, would be rounded up to 8. 7.49 would have become 7. 6.51 will become, will become 7. But 6.49, if you round it to the nearest unit digit, 6.49999 will still be rounded down to to 6 because we are being asked to round it to the nearest unit digit. That's the same idea. So here, this is exactly half and as long as it's equal to, as long as, as long as it's more than, as long as it's more than or equal to, this is the equal to part right here, as long as it's more than or equal to, which in this case is equal to half, that's again it's going to be rounded up. Round up to, oh well not one obviously, this is silly. Oh no, it, it is one, and it is one also. We round it up to one. Let's do one more. Let's do one more, and this time we're going to do mixed fractions. See what happens. What if we had asked, I'm going to pick up the speed a little bit because I'm going at too much of a leisurely pace. How about 3 and 9 14? Well, what we do here when we have mixed fraction is that we leave the, the whole number alone, just concentrate on 9 14. Well, 9 14 is more than half. How do we know that? Because 7 14th is half. 7 14th is exactly half, which means 9 14 is more than or equal to half. Even though it's more than half, we still have to say more than or equal to because that's what the rule is. Since 9 14 is more than or equal to half, this quantity is more than 3.5. It's either 3.5 or something more than that. And therefore, if you are asked to, if you are asked to round it up to the nearest unit digit, or nearest ones digit, we have to round it up. If you are asked to round it to round to the nearest unit digit or nearest ones digit, we have to round it up and it becomes four. It becomes four. Let's do one more. How about five and five twelve? Well same idea. We know we know six twelve is half. We know six twelve is half. Therefore five twelve is less than half. This quantity is less than five and a half. Since it's less than five and a half, or if you want to be more precise, if you want to express everything in twelve, this quantity five and five twelve obviously is less than five and six twelve. Obviously. And since it's less than half, since it's less than five and a half, we're going to round it down. This is going to be round down to, to what? The nearest unit digit to 5 and 5 12 is 5. And I'm going to round it up, it's going to be rounded down. We're going to continue this thing in the next video. I don't want to do too many of the problems uh, in the same video, it's going to be too long. And we're going to do a few more examples in the next video. Uh, I'm not going to explain everything obviously uh, uh, in, in so much uh, detail as I, uh, as, we, uh, as, as I just did in this video. But in the next video, I'll see you on day number 123. Or we're going to continue this concept, and as I said, we're going to do a few more examples. Okay? Bye now.